at Haggai today. Haggai, Haggai. Haggai, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anybody know when Haggai was prophesying? Around 520 B.C. <laughs> you see me write that on here? <laughs> <laughs> That's what mine says, 520 BC. It's one of the... Second year of... Yep. Yep. Darius. 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 <coughs> Darius is actually the way you pronounce that, I found yeah, that's out. right. I always Darius. called it Darius too, but it's Darius, right? Mm-hmm. Haggai has four, like, visions where the word of the Lord comes to him over a rather short period of time, right? Starting about August 29th, 520 BC, finishing up. December 18th, 520 B.C., <laughs> if you put it on our calendar, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Now, what do we know about 520 B.C.? What's been going on? What just happened? What's about to happen? What, you know? When did the Jews leave Babylon and return home? The first batch. <laughs> 528 <laughs> BC. Oh, okay. Right? And what were they going back to do? Oh, rebuild the temple. Build the temple. Right. Mm-hmm. But guess what hasn't finished? The temple. The temple. Okay. So it's been, they started in 536. They stopped in 534, so now for 14 years they haven't done a darn thing on the temple, okay? And the Lord then has some words <laughs> for them. Now what had the Lord done for them? Got their freedom back. Got their freedom back. Now was life easy in Jerusalem with no walls and, you know, no, enemies no. around? And no, apparently not. No, it wasn't. And it wasn't easy for other reasons that we're going to find out. But that could have been different. <laughs> could have been very different. Okay? So like it, like it says in chapter 1-1, one, one, in the second year of Darius, the king, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel. Who is Zerubbabel? Besides the son of Shealtiah. <laughs> The governor of Judah. The governor. governor He's the one that brought them all back. The 50,000 that came Mm -hmm. back, right? Okay. He's he's the governor. He's the one who brought them back, right? How many went when when they went into captivity? (laughs) Well, there were 10,000 in 605, but then in 586, 587, you know, there were another batch in like 597 or 8 that went back that they took, and then they took a bunch more in 586, 7, so I don't know if anybody Mm -hmm. knows the total. But a lot more than the 50,000 that's mm-hmm. now coming back. Okay. They came back. Right? Said so to Zerubbabel and to Joshua, the son of Jeho- Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts. Big what does that mean? That means God's talking to you and <laughs> it's not my words. And, it's, and the Lord of what? The of hosts. Host. The host, Lord of everything. Everything. And that's the important that we're talking about. Yeah. They realize we're talking about the holy God, right? The Lord God Almighty, uh-huh. right? He says, this people, <laughs> he didn't say my people, did he? No. Nope. This people, the time has not come, even the time for the house of the Lord to be rebuilt. <laughs> they haven't built the house, have they? Mm-hmm. Nope. This people. Then the Lord of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, so it's not Haggai that's speaking, right? Right. It's the Lord. Right. It, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies desolate? They had double wides. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean, paneled houses? Nice house. Maybe. Uh, that could be. Technically, it means covered houses. Covered houses. Right? Okay. The, the, the Hebrew 
means covered houses. Because, you know, they build walls with stone, mm -hmm. but then they put the roof on with wood. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But the point being, their houses are in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what's the Lord's house look like? It's in ruins. In ruins still. They did build the foundation. From 536 to 534, they built the foundation, and that was it. They, all the distractions from the enemies around, etc., prevented them from finishing the job. Verse 5, Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> you have sown much, but harvest little. You eat, but there's not enough to be satisfied. You drink, there's not enough to become drunk, right? You put on clothing, but no one is warm enough in the wintertime, right? Mm -hmm. And he who earns, earns wages to put into a purse with holes. You ever done stuff and it just didn't work out? Why didn't he just say, you're prophetic? <laughs> He's giving them the vivid picture, reminding them of all that they're doing and getting very little for it, right? But what are they doing? They're just eating and who's, drinking. And who's number one in their, in their life? Oh, they are. They are. Me, 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 me. Right? I'm, I'm looking out for myself, for number one, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm out planting but my harvest is poor. I'm growing the olives, but I get very little wine, right? My clothes are shabby and holy, and I can't get warm enough in the winter, and, right? All that kind of stuff. And then the Lord repeats, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. If you see something in the Bible twice, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's there for impact, isn't it? Sometimes we have to look at ourselves and say, consider your ways. Myself, my sons, right? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Clint's trying to get this family merged and all these problems, and where's God? Not even in the picture. He's doing it all by himself. Yeah, it won't work. And all he's doing is alienating his daughter mm -hmm. while he tries to make good with his wife so her three kids you know you know he's having a lot of problems with it i bet i bet so well but <laughs> where's where god true. where's god yeah it's not there not there right and he's telling them again consider your ways what are your priorities right mm -hmm. go up to the mountains bring wood and rebuild the temple that i may be pleased with it and be glorified says the Lord. What if your priorities are proper? What's number one? God, will, God will be number one in your life, right? And they're putting him, how far down the totem pole? 14 years, they haven't done a darn thing. Mm -hmm. He's not even on the totem pole mm -hmm. at the moment, is he? <laughs> you know, so that's not very good. <clears throat> now, it could be that we we're actually talking about they had the stone and they paneled the inside. That's covered the wall rather mm -hmm. than covered the house. Mm -hmm. They could have, 14 years. Could have but based on stuff. how broke everybody is, I'm guessing that that's not what it is, yeah. right? Because they're struggling. <laughs> Their purse has holes in it. <laughs> like, yeah. my, like my wife's, the way she gives everything away, <laughs> you know, right? Okay, <laughs> verse 9. You look for much, but behold, it comes to little when you bring it home. I blow it away. And why do they have little? God is God. messing with them. Yeah. Because he's not their priority. He's way down their list. Why, he says, declares the Lord of hosts. Because of my house, which lies desolate, while each of you runs to his own house. You got a house. <laughs> Where's my house? 
<coughs> right? Mm -hmm. Now, what's the central part of Jewish theology? The very core in Jewish theology, right? The temple. The, the, the temple is, yeah. Right, you know, where they make their sacrifices and all that. Now, it's been 85 years since they've been able to make sacrifices. So what have they been doing? This is really nails them to the wall. They, they substituted sacrifices with study of the word. I worship now with study of the word. So they would go together... Right? And uh -huh. the priest would read the word to them, right? And what did they have? The Pentateuch. Oh, yeah. The Torah, okay. right? The Torah. Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. What's in Deuteronomy? Where it says, if you obey me, you get all of this. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you don't get anything. I'm going to knock the snot out of you. <laughs> to sum it up, right? Deuteronomy 28. Uh -huh. You know? This, all, and all the plagues I gave to Egypt, I'm going to give them to you <laughs> if you don't obey me. And then I'm going to send you into captivity. Where were they? <laughs> and that's what they're doing. This is their worship. Mm -hmm. They're studying this. And yet, they don't get it. Why is my harvest little? Why do I have not have enough clothes and food and money? They've been studying it, uh -huh. where God tells them exactly what's going on, but they don't get it. So he has to come to them again through Haggai and say, listen, <laughs> you don't have anything because I blow it away. Right? What did Jesus say in Matthew 6, 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All this other stuff is added yeah. to you. Everything you need, right? You won't go to bed hungry, etc. I'm going to take yeah. care of you if you just seek me first, right? That and what Jesus said, the temple <clears throat> just was a house of prayer. That's what it was supposed to be. Not a place to learn, even though, you know, they would learn. But that it's supposed be, to be a house of prayer, but right? The temple was a house of prayer. But the whole deal was based on those sacrifices mm -hmm. that represented the blood sacrifice that sure. Jesus is going to end up making, mm -hmm. right? But they couldn't do that. Verse 10. Because, oh, he says, therefore, right? Mm -hmm. and whenever you see the word therefore, you have to ask yourself what it's what there it for. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because of you. The sky has withheld its dew. <laughs> and the earth has withheld its produce. Because of you. California has a big drop, right? Oh, yeah. Big drop. Huge. And what are they doing? Now, they're saving that little fish. They're funneling a third of the water they're getting off to take care of, of, of stupid little fish. Yeah. It's right? Flesh in their toilets. Yeah. <laughs> you know... Yeah, they had a guy out watering his plants on TV, you know, just trying to really make him feel bad because he watered his plants, <laughs> you know. But why is California having a drought, right? Why do people, you know, when somebody has an earthquake, mm -hmm. what's the first thing that, you know, the insurance policy says, oh, that's an act of God, so therefore I'm, you're not covered, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't have specific earthquake insurance, it's suddenly an act of God. But if you were to go on TV and say that was an act of God in punishment for your actions, what would people say? Well, you're a hater. Yeah, they say you're an idiot. And you have to go to Haggai and say, no, God said, <laughs> I'm doing all this to you because of your attitudes. attitudes. And you, the newspaper guy or the guy on TV, you know, you're demonstrating that that is the attitude of this country, right? That's what you're doing. You know, he's saying, I've blown it all away. Let, verse 11, and I called for a drought on the land. I called for a drought on the land, mm -hmm. right? Because of you. <laughs> it's your attitudes, your priorities. So in order to get your attention, I am doing all of this. The drought on the land, on the mountains, on the grain, on the new wine, the oil, and on, the, on, on what the ground produces on men, on cattle, and all of the labor of your hands.
because of you, <laughs> mm-hmm. your priorities. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiah, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent them. Now suddenly it's the Lord their God. We're not this people anymore. Mm-hmm. Right? And the people showed reverence for the Lord. Then Haggai, the messenger of the Lord, spoke by the commission of the Lord to the people, saying, I am with you. Boy, that's got to be good news. <laughs> right? I am with you, mm-hmm. declares the Lord. Right? And that's that I, you know, first off, there's the I am again. <laughs> but on top of that, this is the yeah. the ongoing tense, you know. I am with you and will be with you. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiah, the governor of, of Judah, the spirit of Joshua, the son of Zodadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Right? Now, anybody remember when the temple was finished? About 516. So it took them four more years. Oh, okay. From the time they started again in 520 to about 516 when they finished it. And on the 24th day of the sixth month of the second year of Darius the king, right, <clears throat> they're all at work. Second vision, chapter 2, verse 1, on the 21st day of the seventh month, which would be about October 17th, right, 520 B.C., the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shilti, and all the others who is left among you, verse 3, who saw, who saw this temple in its former glory. How many of them would still be around? It was destroyed yeah. in 587, 586, right? Hmm. Now it's 520. So that's 60, 62, 67 67 years years, about. So if they remembered it, they'd have to be about 75 years old. Yeah. Right? And how do you see it now? Does it not seem to you like nothing in comparison? You know, the the first temple was quite a place, Uh right? You know, <clears throat> then there comes the second temple. Herod's, you know, Herod enhances this second temple dramatically, right? Mm-hmm. It becomes quite a place again. Yes. Down in verse 5, As for the promise which I made to you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit is abiding in your midst. Do not fear. Now, keep in mind, the Lord God himself had a presence in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, Mm -hmm. on top of the Ark of the Covenant, between the cherubim, right? Mm -hmm. Right there at the mercy seat. He said, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. When they were completely disobedient, before he had Babylon come and destroy him, God left. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, nobody even noticed. Hmm. Now, I have never found anywhere that in the second temple, all the way through 70 AD, mm-hmm. right, that the presence of God was ever in that temple again. They went through the sacrifices, they did all mm-hmm. the stuff like that you were doing, right? But I don't think God was ever there. Anyway. Just something to think about. Yeah. But he says, I'm with you, right? Mm-hmm. You don't have to fear. Okay, For thus says the Lord of hosts in verse 6, Once more in a little while I'm going to shake the heavens of the earth, the sea also, the dry land. Right? In Exodus 19.18 we have Sinai you know, shaking and the, and the voice of God and the clouds and the people just mm-hmm. said, Hey, don't let God talk to us. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know? And in Hebrews 12, this is all quoted by Paul <clears throat> about the shaking. And I will shake all the nations... And they will come with the wealth of all nations, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. So when Jesus returns, <laughs> which I think this is what this is talking about, right, that's going to be quite a place again, right? But he goes on to explain to people, verse 8, the silver is mine. 
and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. So if you're out there trying to gather up all the gold and silver and you can, you think it's yours? <laughs> it all belongs to God, right? That's why when your car breaks down, you just say, God, your car just broke. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> right? I don't think that works. <laughs> I, I don't think, it, you know. It does. Where do you get the money to pay for it? You know, God provides one way or another. It only cost me $143 to get my car fixed. I thought it was going to cost me about 900 bucks. Turned out to be the rotor in one of the, I have two distributors. Mm-hmm. One of them, the rotor cracked. So I was only firing on one bank. Uh-huh. Four out of the eight cylinders. All right. <laughs> so it ran like it jumped timing. <laughs> but that wasn't what it was. Okay? The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former glory. When, when the temple is finally finished, finished, right? Jesus comes back, right? Mm-hmm. The glory is going to be greater than even the first temple that you guys remember. Okay? And in this place I shall give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. Now, Herod's temple turns out to be quite a deal, right? Oh, yeah. But where's the temple today? Where is it? The body of Christ. Oh, okay. Right? Where's the Holy Spirit resident? In us. In us, the body of Christ. Okay? Now, verse 10 On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, ask now the priests are ruling. (laughs) And he goes on to say, how does somebody become unclean, right? Does this make you unclean? Does that make you unclean, right? But he goes on in verse 14 to say, so this people, right? And so is the nation before me, declares the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and what they offer there is unclean. (laughs) You know, when your attitudes are wrong, your priorities are wrong, everything you're doing is unclean. If you're not putting God first, right? How do you expect his blessings? I'm going to jump down to 19, right? At the very end. Yet from this day, to the 24th day of the ninth month, right? Mm -hmm. Yet from this day, from this day on, I will bless you. No longer will you plant and not grow. (laughs) No longer will you be surviving in clothes that won't keep you warm, right? From this day on, because now you've you've changed, right? You're putting your priorities on finishing the temple and doing the things of God rather than just your own personal life, right? From now on, you know, I will bless you. Then he has the final one, verse 20, the word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the 24th day, same, same day. The fourth deal is the same day as the third. Say to all these people, I will overthrow the thrones, in verse 22, of the kingdoms and destroy the power of the kingdoms of the nations. I will overthrow the chariots and the riders and the horses and all their riders and will go down every one by the sword of another. On that day, verse 23, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtia, my servant, declares the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you. Now, declares the Lord. Guess what's interesting about him? About zero battle? Yeah. If you chase the lineage of Jesus, there's two lineages given, Mm -hmm. right, in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Some people say one's Mary, one's Joseph. I think in reality they're both from Joseph, but one of them is his blood father, the other one was adopted father, or... Uh, or in theory, mm-hmm. anyway. But either way, there's two of them, right? Mm-hmm. Guess where they join? It's Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. He's in both. Hmm. And for him to be in both, he probably had the same situation. You know, hey, buddy. 
they probably had the same the same situation that Joseph probably had, and that is, you know how when if 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 a, a Jewish I'm busy right now, be quiet. When a Jewish man dies with no mm -hmm. children, it's the responsibility yeah. of the closest kin, right? Mm -hmm. To have children, take her as a wife and have children mm -hmm. for him in his name. Mm -hmm. Papa's not right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Apparently, Jerubel was like that because you have two different mm -hmm. fathers now mentioned coming down through that line. One the blood father, one the legal father, you know. Hmm. Kind of thing. And that may have been the same thing with Joseph and explaining the two different lineages listed. Mm -hmm in Matthew and Luke. Anyway, interesting. <laughs> okay, any uh, comments or questions about our friends? Well,